Join us as we explore the vast beauty of Mesa Verdes and the cliff dwellings preserved here. Hitting the trails, we discover some wonderful petroglyphs within spaces once lived in by the ancient Puebloans of this region. The mystery of their disappearance, some 800 years ago, remains to this day. Mesa Verde is well known for its amazing cliff dwellings. However, what surprises many first-time visitors to the park is the vast, rugged beauty of the park. Mesa Verde, in Spanish, translates to Green Table referencing the rich ecology extending around the plateaus. In contrast, the cliff dwellings cluster in a region of canyons that slice the mesa into narrow table lines. The first stop for us is always the visitor center. At Mesa Verde, this is both a showcase for the park as well as where researchers are capturing and recording the artifacts they discover within the park first ancestral Pueblo people in the area arrived around 550 AD. Formerly nomadic, they began the transition to living a more settled lifestyle. Farming replaced hunting and gathering as their main livelihood. Over time, their houses changed from pit houses, clustered on the mesa tops, into rock formations dug into the earth, and somewhere around 1200 AD, they began residing within the cliff dwellings that remain to this day. Leaving the visitor center and heading into the park is a beautiful but surprisingly long drive. If you have scheduled a tour, you should allow an hour in driving time to reach your destination. The road is very busy in summer and requires traversing a lot of tight curves. Unfortunately, drivers will miss much of the beautiful scenery as they must remain focused upon the road. The distance from the visitor center to the museum parking lot at the end of the park is over 20 miles. We are visiting the park in late spring and the cliff dwellings in the Weatherill Mesa area are still closed, hence the park and the roads are largely empty. Our plan is to first visit the Spruce Treehouse area. Normally access to this dwelling is via a self-guided tour. However, at the time of our visit we find that this too is closed. The trailhead to the hike we intended to take is a branch off the path to this dwelling, so our target remains the same. The reason that much of the park remains inaccessible is due to the large amounts of snow that has fallen in this area. As we reach the upper regions of the park, more and more snow is seen along the roadside. We are at 7,000 feet, and this is of course Colorado, which is known for its plentiful amounts of snow. Like all national parks, with plenty of trees, Mesa Verde has not avoided forest fires. One of the final areas that we pass through before reaching our destination is the region where the fire known as the Long Mesa Fire occurred. The evidence of fire is found throughout the park, although the impact of these have been greatly reduced through effective preventative management by the National Park. Pulling into the parking lot, there are still a large number of parking spots available. This will not be the case in peak season, and you should add in time to hunt for a parking spot. During our visit, we're able to park exactly where we want to begin today's hike. This is right near the museum. The trail down to the cliff dwelling and to the trail we plan to take today begins from a paved path behind the museum. Cliff dwellings are seen throughout the region, but those found at Mesa Verde are quite impressive in their size and condition. While some restoration has been done, mostly the work has been to clean up debris from the site. The state that you see is much like it was when the occupants walked away 800 years ago. After a short walk down a paved path, you reach a split. It's here that you either head to the cliff dwellings or begin the hiking trail. Technically, you are on the Spruce Canyon Trail at this point, and shortly thereafter, you can turn onto the Petroglyph Point Trail or continue with the Spruce Canyon Trail. Today, we are taking you with us as we venture over the Petroglyph Point Trail. Both trails are a loop and return you to approximately the start of the paved path. The Petroglyph Point Trail loops along the canyon's edge, beginning below it and ending atop the canyon. The first half of the trail is definitely more challenging and requires climbing over 
and around rocks. This is not an easy trail, and we come across several people that have turned back because of the difficulty. However, there are numerous highlights along the way, and the rewards we come across make the effort seem negligible. It's hard to get the scale of this thing. We quickly come across several places on the trail where ancestral pueblos have either lived or made use of the natural coves for storage purposes. Archaeologists have located more than 4,800 archaeological sites, including 600 cliff dwellings. Some of these finds date all the way back to 550 AD. The trail is actually in great shape and not hard to follow in the least. If you decide to follow us on this trail, note that the elevation here is just below 7,000 feet above sea level, and this does impact the amount of air that you are getting with each breath. Even if you are in great shape, this much change in elevation will make the hike that much harder for you, so take it slow and enjoy the amazing views along the trail. <laughs> We constantly come across walls that have been crafted out of rock that was processed into block shapes and then mortared into place. These fabrications were put here 800 years ago or more. Comparing this to today, where things last only minutes, it's hard to imagine how resourceful and advanced these people must have been. It is thought that thousands lived in this vibrant society, and then, for some unknown reason, they abandon their homes and seemingly disappear from the planet. Many theories are proposed, such as infighting, the insurgence of other tribes, perhaps drought, but to this day there is no clear reason why they left this place and disappeared. The shots for these videos include clips from several devices, including GoPros, cell phones, drone, but the main camera I use is a Nikon mirror body is a Z7, with the main lens being a recently released Nikon 2575 2.8 focal length that I simply love. At this point we've progressed to about midway in the trail. It is here that we come across the petroglyphs, which are in amazing shape. Perhaps it is the difficulty of reaching them that is protecting them from being defaced today. It is great to be able to get up this close and to see them so well. From here, the trail turns back and now ascends to the top of the canyon. From this point, it is a flat, easy walk back to the museum. Near the conclusion of the trail, you are above the spruce tree dwelling and can look out over the canyon. The view is amazing and it inspires one to imagine what it must have been like to live here back then. Departing Spruce Tree, we first stop at the largest and most impressive of the cliff dwellings, Cliff Palace. See the kivas? With at least 150 rooms and 21 kivas, was likely the center of activity in the area. Because of its large kiva to room ratio, some scholars suggest that Cliff Palace was an important gathering place, perhaps an administrative center. Before departing the park, we stop at two more dwellings. However, neither are as impressive as Spruce Tree. Spruce Tree is the third largest of the dwellings and contained about 130 rooms and likely housed as many as 80 people. As a reminder that we are in Colorado and that winter has not given way yet, we get another blast of snow and hail before departing for Utah. What's happening outside, baby? Snow. <laughs> what the crap? Another 
around. That's much better. That's a hound! We are very grateful that you have chosen to watch our video and we thank you. If you liked it, please hit the like button and if you want to see more like it, please hit subscribe. We appreciate all your comments and we will do our best to quickly respond to any questions that you might ask. Our next video will cover our travels into the Grand Staircase in Utah.